Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Three turns of a screwdriver moves a two-inch screw down one-eighth of an inch. How many turns to lower the screw 100%? Okay, so hopefully all of you out there know what a screwdriver is. And if you don't, I'll explain uh, what a screwdriver is. It's a pretty common tool. But uh, if you can figure this out and feel free to use a calculator, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so hopefully we understand the situation. A screwdriver, well, a screwdriver, we're pretty much all of the uh, out there. Uh, I'm pretty sure have used a screwdriver. It looks like this. You probably have one in your drawer someplace. And of course, you know, we're going to be turning some sort of screw here. So I'm going to assume 99% of you know what a screwdriver is. And of course, we have different types of screwdrivers, uh, Phillips screwdrivers, common screwdrivers, flathead screwdrivers. It's really not important for this particular problem. But anyways, uh, three full turns of this uh, screwdriver. Uh, is going to move this two inch screw one eighth of an inch. So I just want to make sure you fully understand the problem. So we're interested in knowing how many times we have to turn that screwdriver to drive the entire screw uh, completely down, which of course is uh, two inches uh, long. All right, so hopefully you understand the problem. And if you want to kind of work on this before you see the answer, well then pause the video, but let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is 48 turns. All right, now how did you do? Well, if you got this right, we have to go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in solving basic math problems, uh, basic math word problems. Now this particular problem, you know, I didn't really kind of indicate how to solve it or what type of problem. Uh, this is like this is an algebra word problem because there's different ways one could kind of come to the uh, right conclusion here. So, uh, you know, it's really not important if you use one technique uh, versus another. But uh, typically, all of you out there that solve this problem correctly um, have to have some basic uh, concept of proportions. And that's really what this uh, video is going to be about. We're going to be talking about something called rates and proportions. This is a huge topic in mathematics. So if you didn't understand this uh, problem or the solution, uh, rather, uh, I'm going to go ahead and fully explain it right now. Okay, so here is the problem. Always get in the habit of reading any math word problem at least three times. Now, I've been doing math word problems for decades, years and years and years. You know, in the beginning, I was uh, not the greatest student. I would just read a problem, just you know, start doing something. And guess what? I didn't get most of those problems correct. It wasn't until I started developing habits and disciplines. And that's what you need if you are serious about, um, you know, improving in math or being successful in mathematics. You have to develop certain academic habits and reading, taking your time, really, you know, fully assimilating all the information in a problem is critical. So although you understand uh, the scenario, you still kind of want to Built, uh, built in a kind of uh, pause, if you will, for your brain to kind of kick in and fully work. So read the problem, make sure you understand the question. So we have this screwdriver again, uh, three turns. If we turn the screwdriver three times, it's going to move this two inch screw down one eighth of an inch. Now, what we're interested in here is how many turns to lower the screw 100%. So that means how many turns is it going to take to move this two inch screw all the way completely uh, flat. So uh, the best thing to do in any problem, okay, particularly a math problem, is to model the information that you have and particularly see if you can visualize the problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at my little diagram here. So here is a screwdriver. It's my depiction of a screwdriver. So 
Again, for those of you out there that don't know what a screwdriver is, well, I think it's pretty important that you do. That's a very common tool. So here you just grab this thing, you turn it around and around, and then uh, uh, right at the tip, there's various uh, types of screwdrivers and they fit different types of screws, right? So for example, the screw over here, this can have like something like this, and it could be what we call a Phillips uh, uh, type of uh, screw. And of course, you'll need a Phillips uh, screwdriver to fit that type of screw or you might have something like this which is a flathead or common situation now if you don't know what i'm talking about well you might want to consider you know maybe um going to your local uh home depot or lowe's and picking up a screwdriver and screws you know you should be a little bit handy but anyways i'm going to assume all of you out there know what the uh, screwdriver and a screw is okay so it doesn't make a difference, again, what type of screwdriver we're dealing with. But what we, need, what we need to do is interpret this part of the problem. And here is our lovely screw. And if we turn this thing three times, right, one, two, three, it's going to move this two-inch screw down one-eighth of an inch. Because that information we do know. And the question here is how many times are we going to have to turn this thing to uh, lower this screw 100 in other words, we're trying to drive or screw this wood into like, well, screw this uh, screw into like a piece of wood, right? So this is going to go down one eighth of an inch and then we're going to keep going down, down, down. And eventually we're going to get to a situation where the screw is completely flat with whatever uh, material we're driving it into. Okay, so hopefully you understand that situation or understand the problem. And again, you know, it's good just to kind of visualize it. And, you know, this is the way I'm kind of describing it. Uh, but you can, uh, you know, model this in any creative way that you want, as long as you understand it. And a good kind of uh, test to, um, well, one thing you should keep in mind, let me say it this way. It's great that you understand what's going on, but you should always keep in mind that uh, could someone else, okay, uh, interpret you know, how you're modeling the problem or how you are expressing the solution. Because if uh, someone else couldn't follow your work, you may want to put in more details or make it clear. That's a good habit to be in just because you understand it. That's great. But it, particularly if you are a student, uh, if your teacher can't understand what you're, you know, thinking or the logic behind what you're doing, then you might want to fill in the gaps so it's clear. And if it's not clear, then it's probably not a good mo uh, way to model the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about what uh, we can do here uh, to model the situation. Well, what we need to do is come up with some sort of, uh, you know, pace of how fast, or well, I don't say how fast, but the rate, this is the correct word. I was trying to think of another word. Uh, I guess speed would be a good word, not velocity, but how fast, you know, this uh, screw gets turned into, let's say, or gets uh, driven in to, uh, you know, material like a, um, uh, you know, block of wood or whatever the case is, right? So the key here is that we need to understand this right here, a rate. And a rate in mathematics has a very specific meaning, okay? And this is a huge uh, topic in math. And it goes along with um, the topic rate, ratios, and proportions, okay? Rate ratios and proportions. So this is, uh, you know, math topics that are generally taught, you know, certainly like at the middle school, definitely at the high school level and beyond. And you need to understand what a rate is, okay? And a, a ratio and of course a portion. So what is a rate? Well, effectively a rate and a ratio is nothing more than fraction, okay? It's a fraction and it's basically comparing uh, two different numbers. But really uh, what we're doing here is comparing two different values with different units of measure, okay? Now, let me give you a real quick example of rate, and of course, you can see I'm, I'm setting up a rate for this prom, but uh, one uh, easy example for a rate, and I'll do it down here, would be miles per hour, okay? So if a car goes 60 miles, okay, per one hour, what we're doing here is comparing uh, miles to hours, okay? And this is a fraction, 60 miles per one hour, but miles is distance and hours is time. So the units of measure have nothing to do with one another. And when you have a situation like that, that is called a rate. So here we can set up a rate because we wanna compare turns to how many inches. So turns has nothing to do with distance, but if we compare this, what we can have here is a rate. 
Now, it doesn't make a difference if we uh, compare turns to uh, inches or distance or distance to turns. That's really not um, you know, too uh, relevant to this particular problem because the uh, answer will work out the same way. But uh, this is what we need to be thinking about, all right? So anytime you're given information where there's some sort of like pace or some sort of speed or some sort of, you know, uh, you know, rate or, or velocity of something going on, you need to be thinking, oh, is this a rate? And uh, if you can express this information as a rate, well, then you're well on your way to solving the problem. Okay, so we're going to uh, come up with a rate of turns per uh, inches or uh, just we're going to uh, compare turns to the distance, which is going to be measured in inches, some sort of fraction that expresses this. So three turns drives down the, uh, the screw one eighth of an inch. We can express that specifically this way. So turns over uh, distance or inches will be three turns uh, per one eighth of an inch. Okay, so this screwdriver and screw situation, uh, three turns of the screwdriver per one eighth of an inch. And notice I am using the word per here, just like uh, miles per hour. Okay, we can express that as mile, miles per hours, or maybe say like gallons per minute. And if you're not familiar with like gallons, that's a unit a measure of volume. Uh, so like, let's say you have some sort of pump. What is the rate of the pump, right? So it's gallons per that fra that P is, uh, or that per is the fraction bar per minute. These are our examples of rates. Okay, so three turns per one eighth of an inch, but uh, that's fantastic. I mean, we got this uh, rate set up, but what do we do with it? Well, we can't really do anything or well, there's no real value of expressing this unless we can establish a proportion, okay? And that's what we're gonna do. So when you um, have a problem, or you detect, oh, look, I have a rate or a ratio, that's a separate discussion, then you need to be thinking proportion, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and explain that right now. All right, so let's just go ahead and get, uh, review the problem again at this point. So we have three turns of a screwdriver, all right? So three turns of a screwdriver moves a two inch screw. Okay, this part of the problem right here is not uh, important right now. Uh, so let's just kind of, you know, let me kind of uh, continue with my uh, train of thought here. So three turns of a screwdriver uh, moves a two inch screw down one eighth of an inch. Okay, so this part right here, we expressed this part as a rate. Okay, now we need to consider this two inch screw to answer this question right here is how many turns to lower the screw 100%, meaning that we have to move the screw two inches. Okay, so again, kind of have to visualize our problem here. So if this thing is two inches right here, we have to move it all the way down so it's flat, right? So that is the problem. Okay, so now that we understand the question, again, when we um, uh, have a rate or we see a rate situation, we need to set up a proportion. It's almost a you know perfect giveaway especially with math problems. If you're a math student, if you detect a rate or a ratio, again, just to be like, okay, this has got to be a proportion problem. So this is the setup to um, solve this problem. Okay, so this is the rate that we already kind of uh, constructed. So three turns per one eighth of an inch, that is the rate of the screwdriver to screw, okay, i.e. how fast we can drive in the screw. But what we want to do here is compare this to another equal fraction because two equal fractions is by definition a proportion. But let's notice here, I'm comparing turns to inches. In other words, turns is in the numerator and inches is in the denominator. So I'm gonna set up another fraction here, but the fraction I'm gonna set up has to have the same units of measure in the same place. In other words, turns in the numerator and inches in the denominator, okay? All right, so the question is how many turns, so well, let me just kind of say it this way. If we have a screwdriver and screw situation such that three turns of the screwdriver moves the screw down one eighth of an inch, how many turns, okay, uh, will it take, all right, to move that screw two inches? Okay, now whatever the answer is, okay, whatever the, the rate to do this, it's in proportion of this uh, situation, okay? So this is how you wanna think. I mean, we use this word pretty freely 
in uh, the English language or any language is uh, proportional, right? So uh, something's in proportion to something else. Well, this is what we're saying. Whatever the proportion is uh, for this, it's the same as the proportion for this, i.e. we have two equal fractions. So again, if it takes three turns to move this inch one eighth, or three turns to move the screw one eighth of an inch, how many turns, x is a variable that represents this unknown, uh, does it take to move the inch to uh, move the screw two inches, which of course is the complete uh, distance to flatten the screw or lower the screw 100%. Okay, so hopefully I didn't confuse you too much with this explanation, but if you understand this, well, uh, really what this comes down to is to solve this proportion for this variable x because x represents the number of turns it's going to take to move that screw down two inches. So again, what we have here is a proportion. Okay, so let's kind of strip away the units of measure. And a proportion by definition is two equal fractions. We have one fraction equaling to another fraction. So let's uh, say for example, if I have one half and it's equal to another fraction that's equal to one half, maybe something like five over 10, right? So this fraction is the same as this fraction. They're equivalent in value. Well, what we can uh, do to um, verify that we have a proportion and to solve proportion problems is to use something called the cross product. In other words, when you have two equal fractions, if you multiply crosswise this way, the uh, products are equal. This is what we call the cross product. So two times five is what? Well, two times five is 10, and that's equal to one times 10, which of course is 10. So again, when you have two equal fractions, i.e. a proportion, the cross product is true. And that is what we're going to be using to solve for this variable X. Now, uh, if you were kind of a little bit lost in the beginning of this problem, let's see if you have the algebra skills to actually solve for X. So maybe you want to pause the, uh, the video and see if you could do this real quick, because I am going to take the next step and show you exactly how to do this. But before we do that, I'm going to show you this, which is me asking you to please uh, hit that subscribe button. I definitely need your support to continue to grow my channel. But uh, you know, it's not, you know, my whole uh, reason to being on YouTube, it's not about me, okay? I mean, in terms of, yes, you know, I know math, I've been teaching math and learning, uh, studying math for decades. I love mathematics, but here's the deal. My whole uh, mission is to help other people learn math, okay? Especially people that are on the edge in terms of their education. I'm talking about people that could be, you know, like in high school or college, where they could run into a difficult situation. Even students who are earlier on than that, middle school or, or younger, you know, they could have just one bad experience with math, okay? It has nothing to do with their ability or potential to learn mathematics, but for, you know, for some reason, they get the idea in their head that they're bad in math, or maybe some teacher, you know, God forbid, said you were bad in math. I'll tell you, that is a, really is a tragedy because what happens is people shy away from math and that closes a lot of doors because there's people out there I know personally, and I, I've heard this story year after year after year after year, where people who wanted to be an engineer, who wanted to be an architect or whatever the case is, but just kind of shied away uh, from those career paths because they were afraid they were fearful of mathematics or afraid of failing. This is what I'm trying to prevent. Okay, I can tell you right now, you can succeed, but you need to know two things. One, uh, you need to know how to work, right? So learning anything that's worthwhile is going to require commitment and work. So if you're looking for shortcuts, then this is not the right channel for you. But if you're willing to work and study hard and put your best into it, what you need is great instruction, clear and understandable, comprehensive math instruction, not just quick tutorials. So those of you out there that are trying to learn math, maybe, you know, going from, uh, you know, like YouTube, for example, you know, you got to be careful because a three uh, minute, five minute little video on a particular topic might give you a sense of what you're doing, but that's not going to get you enough to master mathematics. So if you um, are interested in really mastering math and you like my teaching style, check out my full courses. You'll find links to all of them in the description below. And uh, anyways, let's get back to this problem. Thanks for giving me a little bit of time to uh, talk about my channel because this is my true passion. Okay, so let's get back to the problem. And again, we have this lovely proportion and we know uh, why we have it. Here is our rate, three turns for every one eighth of an inch. How many turns for two inches? So it's proportion 
two equal fractions. So to solve this thing, all we need to do is apply the cross product. Okay, so we're going to uh, multiply across this way. So we're going to have x times 1 eighth is going to be 1 eighth times x. And then 3 times 2, of course, is going to be uh, 3 times 2. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this. So 1 eighth of an inch or 1 eighth x is equal to 2 times 3, which, of course, is 6. How do we solve for x? Pretty easy. All we need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 8. So 8 times 1 eighth is 1 or uh, 1x or just x, and then 6 times 8 is 48. But what does x represent? Well, x represents the number of turns, right, that uh, uh, is needed to move the inch, or sorry, move the screw down uh, 2 inches, right? So that's what uh, x represents. So 48 turns is the right answer. And let's kind of go down here. Let's suppose some of you are like, hey, I'm not so sure that uh, Mr. U2 Math Man here is right. Uh, how can we kind of maybe check this? Well, let's think about it. So if it takes three turns to move the uh, screw down uh, one eighth of an inch, uh, let's take the answer. Okay, we have 48 turns. Okay, and let's just divide it by three. Okay, let's just see how many uh, uh, times every three turn. How many three turns are we going to get out of 48 turns? Right. So I don't know if I said that right, but effectively uh, we're going to get 16. So if we take 48 divided by 3, we get 16. So that's 16 times we're going to move the uh, uh, screwdriver three times, right? So we're going to do this 1, 2, 3. We'll do this 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And that will be 16 times 3, which, of course, is 48, okay? Now, uh, every time, okay, we move the screwdriver, turn the screwdriver, rather, three times we move one-eighth of an inch. So one-eighth of an inch, one-eighth of an inch. So what's the total amount? What well, would be... 16 times 1 eighth, right? So 16 times 1 eighth of an inch is going to be what? Well, 16 times 1 eighth is going to be 16 over 8 or 2, 2 inches. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. And uh, again, if you are new to math, let's suppose you're just, you know, interested, you know, maybe this prom uh, caught your uh, and you're like, yeah, I can figure it out. Again, you know, even if you didn't know about proportions, just reason through it. That is fantastic, okay? Because you should never be, um, you know, uh, never sell yourself short. Let me just say that when it comes to uh, doing a math problem. That's why I never like to say, hey, this is an algebra problem. You need to do this, that, and other thing. Because, you know, somebody can kind of tinker around with this problem and reason through it. And, and that's that's really the hallmark of, um, you know, of someone who can really learn, you know, any topic, you know, you just, you're not willing, you got to be tenacious, okay, you got you to be willing to, you know, uh, if it gets tough to maybe look for other strategies and whatnot, but, you know, the thing with math is the more you know, the more math skills you have, then it's like tools, right, you have more tools to solve, you know, and recognize different type of prompts. Now, if some of you out there are just interested in relearning math, maybe you forgot a lot of mathematics, and you're like, yeah, I used to learn this stuff way back in the good old 1980s, but I forgot all this. Boy, I wish I would be uh, able to kind of remember all this stuff again. Well, check out my new course. I'll, of course, you'll find a link to it uh, in the description. It's called uh, Math Skills Rebuilder. A lot of people are taking advantage of of this course, and it, it is, you know, the course is uh, self-explanatory. It uh, rebuilds your math skills, okay, especially, you know, at the, let's say at the high school level, but I just don't start at the high school level. I start with basic mathematics because a lot of you, uh, you know, kind of need a review in fractions and, you know, decimals and percent, all that kind of good stuff. So I start there, and then I uh, teach you a ton of algebra, geometry, trigonometry, probability, statistics. It is a, a very, very well-rounded math education that can serve you in your real life. And, of course, if you want to continue on and build uh, on top of that into more advanced uh, math courses, this course will be an excellent preparation for you. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.